Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pockets Full of Soup, the storytelling show. I'm your host, Jared Petty, and today I'm joined by this fella. Hey, I'm Max Scoville. You are Max Scoville. Max Scoville, where in, in the universe, in the internet, in the in the land of knowledge would people find you? You might know me from such website that have videos as IGN, where we work together. Uh, I'm also on the Comedy Button Podcast, which is a show that I've been doing for almost five years that is about nothing. Uh, we started it with the assumption that maybe it was about jokes, but it isn't always. So it's just sort of life and growing up and friendship. But uh, yeah, I'm just I'm around, man. I'm just on the internet. And now you're here. I'm and, here uh, now. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Yeah. Well, um, I live here, so that helps. That's true. We're yeah. in your house yeah. right now. That's right. The podcast uh, is coming from inside the house. It is indeed. Pick out clues from the background to learn where Max lives. <laughs> I mean, you get, it's going to be like a weird, like a, if, if somebody manages to backtrace the phone call because there's like a <laughs> like a Dragon Ball Z mug and a, and a Playmobil figure behind me, they're like, ah, we figured it out. We triangulated his coordinates. We understand what's going on now. <laughs> so, uh, Max, uh, we always start with uh, roughly the same question until I decide to change it up. Um, I'd like to ask you to tell me about somebody you're thankful for. So this is a very special one. I'm excited about this. Uh, I'm very thankful for my father. Your father. My father. And that's like a kind of a, it's I, like, I know that, uh, I guess some people might jump to like, just a parent. Cause honestly, like you need two parents to sort of exist, you know, unless there's some weird test tube stuff going down. But mm -hmm. like, for the most part, you got to have kind of two ingredients there. Um, I didn't know my dad until I was 20 years old. Like I met him very late in life. So it's kind of this, it's still, he's, he's still sort of a new element. Um, I was raised by my mom. I'm an only child. Uh, it was just me and my mom until I was, yeah, 20 uh, in college. And I realized that I should probably figure out who my dad was. Well, let's jump back a little bit yeah, and then yeah. we'll, we'll get to that. Because I, I, I think people are going to be like, hey, wait a minute. You didn't know your dad for 20 yeah. years. So how did this come to be? Um, Which end? Oh, like, how did I get to know him or how did he? Let's start you know, with uh, Let's start with how it was that you didn't know your father for a long time. Um. I mean that's a very that's a very complicated question. Uh, I think that my mom was she was a very she was a very independent lady. Mm -hmm. um, she ran restaurants in the eighties in New York and was like uh, doing stuff that I mean she was kind of I mean not ahead of her time but she was like you know she's a tough broad basically. Yeah. Uh, and I think that I mean I wasn't really I wasn't really planned for. Um, mm -hmm. She and my dad were old friends, and uh, I think she'd been told that she couldn't have kids and. So when it kind of lo and behold, that a doctor was like, "Hey, uh, there's a there's a baby inside you," she was like, "Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna see where this goes. You know, I'm mm -hmm. gonna follow this through." And uh, my dad wasn't really, you know, that wasn't really part of the the plan for him. You know, mm -hmm. and so she was like, "Hey, uh, uh, I'm having your kid," and he was like, "Um, he didn't just like." He didn't really just like bounce, but he was kind of like, that's not really something I was anticipating. And she was like, well, I can do this on my own. Fuck it, you know? Okay. And uh, I mean, I, I definitely went through a, a sort of a Kylo Ren phase where I was not a fan of him. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to fucking kill him. I hate Did this you guy. always know who he was? No. Um, my mom actually told me originally that he was French. I was born in France and I was sort of like, oh yeah, he's some French guy. Like that makes sense. But And you were um, really born in France. I was actually born was there. Yeah. Guy. Okay. Um so that made sense, you know, it like kind of it added up. But uh she told me that because they had a lot of mutual friends. I didn't tell you his real name or who he was because I was afraid you'd blurt it out at a dinner party and it would be very uncomfortable. I mean, you know, not she didn't say it like that, but she's yeah. like he didn't want this so I wanted to respect his privacy. And then when I finally caught up with the guy and I was like, so why weren't you around? He was kind of like, I didn't really want to screw up what you had going on. You know, like there mm -hmm. was no indication that, you know, like I sought him out. So did, did you, so you never met him before that 20 years had passed at all? I had never met him. No, never met him at all. And he was, he wasn't around when you were born, any of that. He was already gone. No. Um, I think he helped out financially a little bit here and there, mm -hmm. but, um, there was at one point like a there was like a patriarchy suit like I had to get a DNA test. This is like kind of a very large can of worms here, and there's a lot of like little odd sort of tendril like yeah. This, this, here, sound, but, this uh, sounds like something that could be fraught I mean, with peril. Yeah, um, but to go to go back to kind of just like the the fundamental question here is uh, I am thankful for my dad because he has like I mean he is he he's been incredibly like. Not, not welcoming, but he's 
I mean, like, he's been very nice to me. Like, I, I called him up out of the blue, and I was like, hey, uh, I'm your kid. And he went, actually, I didn't say that. I said, uh, hey, uh, I, I'm, and I said, well, I'm, I'm my mom's kid. And she, he goes, oh, yeah, I was hoping you'd give me a call. And we're, like, really close now. Like, I do holidays with him. Like, he's he's a, a stable element in my life. And that's really fucking uncommon. Well, family's come in a lot of a lot of shapes. It sounds yeah. like yours is yours is a. a I mean, it's a, a it's a Cinderella story. Like it's a full blown like this is a fairy tale ending. Like this shouldn't make this shouldn't happen. This doesn't happen. Well, let's talk about the story for a second. You mentioned a color ren face, and then <laughs> uh, and then you mentioned getting to the point that you called him. What was what was that transition? What led to you deciding I'm going to go from being very angry at this person yeah. I don't know to seeking them out and building a, a relationship that's become an important part of your family? Yeah, and I think it was fifth grade we had some bullshit homework assignment for english class where it was like oh you're a you're magical super saiyan santa claus and you can give ultimate christmas presents to everybody around you what do you get everybody and i was like oh man i'd get my cousin a new uh, mountain bike and i'd get my best friend a playstation and i'd get my mom a big bottle of perfume and a husband and i like you know read this tour with all that kind of like adorable like precocious fifth grader ishness that you like you do and um she started crying and I was like, oh, red alert, sore subject, shouldn't talk about this, uh, oh, touchy, 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 go away, no, no, never talk about this again, you know, and there's this kind of like, there's this kind of like only child, like, uh, single parent thing where it's like, you, you have this kind of, like, you're protective, you know, like, yeah. and it's, uh, it's always been like, oh, I, I have to take care of my mom too, you know, yeah. like she takes care of me, but I have to take care of her. Like we're kind of, we're okay. in this together. And, uh, so I was like, oh fuck, that's a really, that's something I should never talk about again. So I kind of like built up in my head that I shouldn't ever bring this up to my mom because it will upset her. Okay. And apparently she was not crying because she felt that something was missing from her life and that it was a thing that made her sad, but she felt sort of shitty that. I didn't have a dad. Felt and like you she, might be projecting that. Yeah. That on. Well, okay. so she, and of course, like I was sort of just like, we never really talked about that. And that was kind of one of those things that we probably should have. But, um, so for the longest time, like I actually kind of built it up. So I just avoided it. Like I didn't want to think about it. I, I kind of worked myself up to hate the guy. And, uh, I mean, God bless her. She's always been incredibly like objective and like very open-minded. And she's been like, I remember very specifically a conversation we had, and this was when there was kind of this like, this paternity suit going on. Um, and we're in like the, we're in the car in the parking lot of like a, a drugstore in Sonoma. And she, I don't know how this, I don't know how this came about, but I mean, it's like a, a teenage, you know, teenage son, mother conversation. And I just go, I'm going to kill him. I'm going to kill my dad. And she sort of goes like, ah, okay. I mean, I mean, he's kind of a big dude. Like, he's pretty athletic. So, I mean, I don't know if you could take him. And at this point, I'm like this, like, very chubby, quasi-pubescent, blue-haired kid with, like, raver pants and a cowboy bebop shirt. And she's just kind of like, uh, that's nice, dear, you know? <laughs> that, that, that's what I she mean, was she was kind of like, like, I love that I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill my estranged father. And my mm -hmm. mom's like, I don't know if you could take him. You're really out of that's shape. That's adorable story. <laughs> that's just... Um, but yeah, she was always like very like very open minded, very very cool about it, and um, I kind of just I kept putting it away, and then so she helped diffuse it there, and then kind of okay, but you're you're sort um, of packing it away inside. So uh, what changed? There were these kind of the way I always described it was I went from basically knowing nothing about the guy almost voluntarily, yeah, to suddenly knowing a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way I always described it was like let's say that like the inside of your head, like you're you're kind of not your worldview, but your like your personal kind of your your space, your the in, inside of your brain. Let's yeah. say that's a room, and it's full of things that you know where they are. They're familiar. Maybe there's some stuff there you don't love, but you know it's like it's all kind of your shit. It's your bedroom. And let's say you wake up one day, and there's one of those just giant wooden carvings of a Native American man, like they have at tobacco stores. Okay, and you're like. What the fuck is that doing here? Like, what is that? You just found it, and in you're there like, one you're day. like, it's not like you're like, it's not like. I mean, it's vaguely problematic. It's not something I'm fond of, but I'm not like. It's not like a big spider, you know. It's not like a bad thing. It's just like, why is this here? What do I do with it? It's very large. It, sh it, it should it be here? Does mm -hmm. it does it work? Does it tie the room together? I don't know. Um, but basically, I I had a therapist when I was in high school, I think, who sort of casually brought up my dad 
And at this point, I knew nothing. Like, I didn't know the guy's name. I didn't really know anything. And my mom kind of, we're in, like, family therapy. And my mom kind of offhandedly just spouts off, like, Oh yeah, he's in LA. He's got a um, he's got another. He's got a family. Like he's got he's got a few kids and uh, like to the therapist, kind of like the way adults talk when kids yeah. are around. And I just go, "What the fuck? I didn't know any of that." Like spoilers. Like get the fuck out of here. Like I didn't. Like yeah, you just you just ruined a fucking season of Game of Thrones for me. Like that is not something I knew about. And uh, at that point, the therapist was like, "Well, we're uh, we're pretty close to wrapping up here, but we should probably come back to this next week because clearly we found a very sore subject for you." Um, but I mean, I went, it's weird to think like, you know, you, he was not, he was not a person to me initially. Yeah. Like he was a figure. He was huh. like this kind of element. It makes sense. You never met yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like the whole thing where, you know, if there's, if you, if you see a spider in the bathroom, you're like, oh man, that spider is in the bathroom. It's gross. I don't necessarily like it. But if you see a spider and then you turn around and then it disappears and you're like, where the fuck is the spider? Like the fact it's hmm. kind of Schrodinger's cat type of thing. Like yeah. we're just like, it, what's, what's there? Is there anything? Um, I don't know where the, the, I didn't know who the fuck my dad was. And he went from being this non-existent sort of phantom element to, Oh, here's where he lives in LA, which is yeah. a pretty big area, but that's, that's a, that's a grounded concept. That's a real thing. It's a place that yeah. exists in the real world. Yeah. And then, yeah. Oh, he's got a, he's got kids and I'm like, Oh, so there's other people who have my DNA and they're, I don't, what are, what are they like? Are they cool? Like, what's that? Like, you know, what do you do with that? Uh, and so, like, it's kind of just weird to see somebody. I mean, it's like, I, I just imagine it like um, like amoeba, like like single-celled organisms, like, kind yeah. of, like dividing. And then suddenly, like, it goes from this, like, one little blob to, like, suddenly, oh, there's, like, a more complex series of bits and pieces here. Uh, and I kind of played with that in my head. And it was like the kind of, it was like the, you know, the tobacco store Indian. It's like this kind of, this, this thing. And I'd, like, wake up and I'd be like, hmm, who is this man? And I still was like, terrified of asking my mom about him yeah uh but i still knew like a little bit and i would ride the bus home from from a community college every day and there was this old guy who i'd talk to uh this like random old like santa claus looking motherfucker and like i i don't remember his name i think it was like jerry or something but he was uh totally like totally nice guy and we just make small talk on the bus and i think i like he mentioned that he had a kid who he didn't see often enough. And I was like, Oh yeah. Like I haven't met my dad. And he's like, Oh, what's up with that? And I was like, this thing that I can't talk to my mom about that. My friends don't even talk to me about. Like, of course, just, I spill my guts, to this stranger on the bus and that weird sort of, I mean, I guess I kind of understand like, I mean, it's like therapy or confession, you know, it's like this kind of like, Oh, here, there's not really a connection here. I'm like, it's, yeah, fuck it. Um, so this guy, like he just kind of innocently goes like, you should give him a call. It was, it was actually, it was almost exactly that scene uh, in Home Alone where he sees the old snow shovel man and they're in the yeah. church together and he's just like, I have a daughter. We had a fight one time. Um, yeah, so like I literally... Except that in this scenario, your house was not attacked by robbers. Exactly. I mean, after. that yeah. was another story, but you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right, we'll I'm not thankful for those men, those awful wet bandits. Um, but no, I took out a pen and I wrote, ask mom about dad on my arm. Like, just do this. Just you're, you're, I've written, I don't know how many times I wrote French homework on my arm, like page numbers, like do, do these page numbers. And I would just forget about it. But I was like, this is kind of an important one. So I wrote that and I got home and my mom's like washing the dishes or getting dinner ready or something. And I'm like, Hey, um, can I ask you about my dad? And she's like, yeah, what do you want to know? And I was like, I mean, what's his name? We could start there what's the story? Like what's going on? And we sit down and we have this like long talk and she tells me all this kind of stuff about him, like this kind of just anecdotal bits and pieces and like kind of what he's like. And you know, she was never negative. Um, and we had the, the like, I, I mean, you know, I love star Wars. I'm a big star Wars nerd. Yeah. There's always kind of like, I kind of like it because there's a part where they go into this bar and there's a bunch of werewolves that are getting drunk in space. And that's funny to me. That's a good part. But there's also that kind of like, you know, those themes of like, the hero's journey and this boy becoming a man. And there's like estranged fathers all over the place in that shit. And, Mm -hmm. uh, we had this conversation and she told him that like the last time she saw him, um, was at this, like this like legal proceeding, like this paternity suit thing. And I was like, what did he do? And she's like, well, he didn't really say much, but I went up and I handed him a picture of you. And I said, here's a picture of Max in happier times. And he just took it without saying anything and put it in his pocket and walked away. And I was like, 
I think just kind of out of sort of just whatever. I was like, fucking asshole. And she goes, no, there's good in him. And I go, he's more machine than man now. <laughs> like, like, and she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm sorry. I've seen, I've seen science fiction films too much <laughs> in lieu of having a father figure. <laughs> so you jumped, you jumped directly to, yeah. to Obi-Wan Kenobi. On yeah, that. I was just like, the fact that she was just kind of gets this like wistful look. She's like, there's still good in him. And I think that is the most Scott Pilgrim real life moment I've ever heard. Yeah, there's a few of those. It's, it's some, some strange shit. But uh, that's pretty wonderful. I don't know. Stranger so than you, fiction. But you did call him eventually when you were 20 years old. Mm. He became a first. Person. I doxed him. Um, okay. <laughs> I took right. the handful of tidbits that my mom had told me about who he was. Yeah. And I went on Google and I just started digging around and I found as much information as I could without, you know, kind of, you know, doxing him further. You know, I just like he runs a restaurant and like I had his, his first and last name and I had some of his like background info and I just like rooted around and I got this like crazy scheme in my head where I was going to road trip down there to LA with my best friend. I was living in um, you know North Bay at the time, and uh, my buddy Sam and I were going to go down there, and we were going to like, we we're just going to tear shit up. We we're going we to be detectives. We we're going to be like, I'm looking for this man, I'm trying to find him. Well, you fucking, got the shirt for it already. Yeah, you're right, no, yeah, exactly. You're right. um, and I told people this, and they were like, I mean, that's funny, but like maybe take this a little more seriously, kind of. I don't know. And everyone was like, you should call ahead of time, and I was like. Nah, see, we're detectives. We're going to track them down. We're gumshoes. Real private eyes. A <laughs> couple of dicks. Um, Do you think they made it easier? Just, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I mean, I was stupid. I was like 19, 19 yeah. or 20. Um, and I wound up uh, sort of having a weird falling out with my friend. It was not like a full thing, but it, he was just kind of like, like clearly this was something I was taking much more seriously than he was. Uh, and then I started dating this girl and she was like, hey man, this is clearly something you've got going on. We should fix it for you. And... So she was like, give him a call and we'll drive down and see him and you can meet your dad. And I was like, okay. And so I call him up, I get his voicemail and I leave the most, like I remember this really well. It was like a summer afternoon. It was like, it was probably June or July or something. And I like, I was in my kitchen and I just come home from school or something. And I'd like, like I'd had his number, like I had it there and it was kind yeah. of this thing that was like, you know, you're like, oh, I, I, do I make the call? You know? And I'm sitting in my kitchen. I have this like glass of pink lemonade and I like take a sip of it and I put it down. I have the cordless phone back in those old, those salad days. Um, (laughs) And and, uh, I call him up and I get the most rambly, hey, I'm not in right now. Uh, If you're trying to reach X, Y, and Z, names all my half siblings, which is weird because I'm like, oh shit, I now I know my siblings' names. That's kind of interesting. Uh, You know, they're not here. You can reach them at their mom's house. Anyway, uh, Leave your name and number. And it was like, it was like the same way that I just kind of ramble. Like it was just this weird. Sounded ass, strangely and I, familiar. Like, the first time I hear my dad's voice is a voicemail, which was pretty weird. And so I leave the most nonchalant rambly message possible where I'm like, Hey, it's Max. Uh, I, um, I just been meaning to call you for a while. Uh, I'm going to be down in LA pretty soon. I figured we can maybe get lunch. Uh, yeah. So give me a call back. Here's my number. And, uh, you know, hope to talk to you soon. Anyway, See ya. Like, just the most, like, be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool. And I hang up the phone, and I just fall over on the floor. I just, like, keel over, and I just go, ah! Was it terror? Was it relief? It was just what adrenaline. Was it was, like, okay. it was kind of, and it wasn't, like, sad or anything. And then he fucking calls me back while I'm in the shower. And I get this, I had this, like, shitty, like, crack dealer cell phone. And he leaves this voicemail <laughs> where he's like, hey, Max, uh, yeah, I was hoping you'd call. And I was like, First of all, that's like really cool. I'm, I'm, it was pretty cool to have like a, a voicemail. It was like this little, like little portable thing. I think I played it probably for everybody I knew. I was like, my dad called me. They were like, okay. And I was like, no, the one I've never met. And they were like, oh, you know, but he was like, hey, I was hoping you'd call. This is great. Um, we should totally get together anyway. Here's my cell number. Uh, you know, it's really funny. This happened to a friend of mine. He had the same, he had to make the same kind of phone call. Uh, I'll tell you about it. Uh, but yeah, give me a call. Like just totally like kind of like, no kidding. Yeah. Um, did, uh, did you keep that? Do you still have it? No, I wish I did. I wish I like backed it up somehow. I mean, it was on like a Virgin mobile, like crack dealer phone. Like it was, it wasn't really going to happen. Yeah. It wasn't really archivable. It wasn't like just save a wave file or export it or whatever. But, um, yeah. So I went down to LA and I had this really like 
my my girlfriend was like we were visiting her grandma for a second and then she was like yeah let's go stay at your dad's and my i call up and he's like yeah i'm staying at my girlfriend's house and i'm like like girlfriend what the fuck like you know, I, don't, I don't i don't understand what people in la do and he's a grown, yeah. he's a grown man um she's now my stepmom she's very cool but um he's like yeah here's the address uh you know and it was like one of those like before everyone had Google Maps, it was like, yeah, uh, you got to be sure to cross this one street. Kind of, it's a bad intersection, but then look for parking on the one side, and uh, it's a white picket fence, and you know, come on in. How we used to find things, exactly, yeah. yeah which so, was, it just feels like so kind of, I don't know. It was not that long ago. This uh, was this was it, yeah. almost ten years ago. This was two thousand seven. Yeah. But yeah, it, yeah, in the scheme of things, a different world, but yeah. less than you know, yep. less than a decade ago. Yep. So you you go, and I assume at this point, because he's kind of become a reality, there's a mental image that you have. Uh, at least yeah. personality. I mean, I actually, no. So that's the funny part: is the first picture I saw of him was on Amazon because he was in a book about Grateful Dead related stuff. Okay. And I like, I mean, I I did I did some like deep dive like research. Like I dug yeah. up a bunch of information about him, and I was like, oh, he apparently wrote a piece for this one book, and I looked it up on Amazon, and they were like, look inside the book, and I'm like, it's probably not going to have anything in there, but like the four pages they were like yeah front cover title page the first three pages of the book as samples and then oh the back cover flap where there's a picture of them and i like look at it and it was like uh i mean it's a postage stamp size picture in the back of a book about the grateful dead probably not the best first impression yeah. of assessing what a adult man looks like um but yeah i'd sort of had like an idea he's looks like me kind of but not really but also old i don't know um, so is this like a is this a movie set moment you you come to the door you knock or hit the doorbell and the door opens and your dad's on the other side uh kind of uh yeah. it was kind of anticlimactic because they had like big windows and they had a like like they had like there was no like you could see in the door yeah so like there's no mystery yeah so uh but i think my my stepmom like ran over and she opened the door and she's like hey thank you for coming this is awesome um and then my dad's there and he's like Hey, you as nervous about this as I am? And I'm like, oh. I mean, yeah. And he's like, you want a beer? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and so we go sit on the back porch for six hours and just talk. So your first conversation in your life with your dad is, are you as nervous about this as I am? Pretty much. Yeah. You want a beer? And you sit on the back porch for six hours and share a beer with your dad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What did um, you guys talk about? Uh, a little bit of everything. I was trying to get a sense of like what kind of stuff he was into i'm like what are his politics like you know what are his interests i was like i remember him telling me some like weird anecdote about uh about like i think it was like how in uh in the vietnam war there were like american soldiers had m16s which were famously like kind of not great guns uh and they were always jamming and getting mm -hmm. shit stuck in them and it was really bad and then they were like these guns are shit. Let's give them to the locals. And they just like handed a bunch of M16s to a bunch of like, you know, uh, South Vietnamese soldiers. And they were like, okay, we'll take care of them. And they like sent them off to some battle. And the guys came back and they were like, how are those guns? Did they, did they fuck you up? Like, are you okay? And they're like, yeah, they're fine. You just got to fucking clean them after you shoot them, idiots. And they were like, apparently just actually, they'd been using these like, you know, World War II era, you know, bolt action rifles and switching to something automatic. They were like, oh yeah, you just got to take care of it. Better. You just got to take care of yeah. this and that's that. So okay. he tells me this, this whole story. And I was like, so are you like a military history guy? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> he's like, I just, and, and now I get it. He's, he's, I mean, to say he's like me is sort of disingenuous. I'm like him. It kind of mm -hmm. works the other way around, but just, just kind of collects weird tidbits of information. He's like a car genius. He likes fixing things. And just um, sort of carry those around and shares them as a joy. Yeah. Or, okay. We finish each other's sentences. Um, I am like a key witness in the case of nurture versus nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, sense of humor is straight up genetic um we've we've made like literally the exact same joke before hmm. and it's it's one of those things where like i'll try to kind of convey that to other people but until they actually see it themselves it's not really also um i realize i make a lot of like just awful dad jokes like i make like stupid puns and just just dad jokes yeah and that's because i never had a dad around to ruin them for me okay like that's totally like they're still fun for me because I, I didn't I didn't have some <laughs> I didn't have some fucking dorky asshole ruining like for me growing up. So yeah. they're all fresh for you. Yeah, yeah. You're you're ready to ruin somebody else's life with them. Pretty okay. much. Yeah. That's, what um? So what about this man who, after that day, has become an integral part of your life? 
What are you thankful for about him? What what what, what about mean, your dad makes you? Thankful? He's been like he has, like he he has no obligation to accept me. Like there's, he, I wasn't his idea, you know. Like I get that, and it's obviously you can, you know, if you're a social worker, you're probably like, oh, actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a totally his responsibility to pay child support. And it's like, yeah, but like that wasn't his fucking plan, like. He and my mom hooked up, and they were like, "I as as an adult now, I'm like, sometimes shit happens, weird stuff goes down, you know, and like, there's no, you can't plan these things necessarily. Like, I mean, my dad always says, like, I, you know, he didn't. I think it's a John Lennon quote, but life is what happens when you're making other plans, mm-hmm. and you can't really anticipate how things are going to work out. And like, that said, like to have this full grown kid roll up and be like, hey. I'm your kid at a time when, I don't know, he had a bunch of other shit going on. It's sort of, he could have just been like, no thanks, I'll pass. Like, nice to meet you, carry on. Um, But he wasn't, he was great. Like, he was really cool, he was accepting, he was kind, and uh, I think a good part of that was also my, like my stepmom was really, really accepting. Oh, something exciting happening. There's my, uh, Loud little dog. Oh, there we are. And my roommate. So um, ruining everything. Nothing ruined. That's at okay. All. You're fine. So if um, if that's what your dad has meant to you, what? I don't know. I don't know if you plan on having kids. I think this, the whole lesson of this is that plans don't turn out the way you expect anyway. But let's say that you do. Whether mm-hmm. you plan them or not, let's say you do. What about what? What from your father? Do you want to bring into the lives of your children? Just the worst fucking jokes. Just yeah. the worst jokes I can possibly like. The bad puns. Sorry, kids. Um, but no, like I think that just to f- fixing things, doing stuff. Like my dad's very much like the kind of like he just likes to fix things, and I am not as good at it. But I also like to fix things, and it comes mm-hmm. down to like you know, like what are we what are we doing today, Dad? And he's like. The uh, little sticky things on the bottom of the chairs in the dining room are all fucked up, so we got to go in there and tweak them and put some new ones on there and maybe just scrape off the glue. And I'm like, that sounds so boring, but let's do it. You know, and it's like, it's just that that feeling of like taking something and being like, there we go. It's You want to do that in your family? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I also like, I was terrified of, of, relationships when I was younger because mm-hmm. that's one thing they don't they don't tell you about having a single parent is like you don't have any you don't have any role models in terms of like here's what a relationship looks like you know people mimic that like if you if you grow up in an abusive household like it's very common that that kind of gets carried on you know yeah but I was raised with single mom so it's like well, how do dads act I don't fucking know I have no idea like what what does a man do like what is you know, and it could be worse. I could have like a, a creepy stepdad. Like that's one thing I will give my mom like just mad props for, for never just, I never had a shitty stepdad and that's mm-hmm. fucking awesome. That, Cause I feel like just be some like Kevin Costner ass motherfucker who'd be like, <laughs> I think he's going to love football if I teach him about it my way. But that didn't happen to you. No, it didn't happen. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. My dad, I, once I met him, it was, uh, the m- just most magnificent sudden kind of, burst of confidence because like you look at you look at you know you look at your parents and you're like that's me that's what i'm made Mm. out of but to have like half the equation missing yeah you don't know what to do with that and then suddenly to be like oh it's okay you know like i nobody's perfect you know but i think that when 50 percent of your kind of biological makeup is just question marks it's really easy to doubt yourself. So to meet this guy and be like, oh my God, we have so much in common. And he's like successful and happy and not a, not an asshole. And like, it's just, I don't know. It, it made me kind of go, oh, I'm going to be all right. Like I'm going to figure this out. And like, that was, that was it, you know? That's, that's pretty wonderful. I, I, 
Thank you so much for telling us uh, about your dad. You're welcome. I really I'm, appreciate it. Thanks for letting me tell my story. I'm glad you had a story to tell. <laughs> it was a heck of a one. I, uh, I, I'm really, I'm touched, honestly. Uh, that's We're all a little I, touched. I didn't know this about you. I yeah. didn't know this story. Uh, it's a weird tonight. story. So it's, it's... Oh, and there's more to it, too. I also still haven't really connected with those siblings, and they're floating around here somewhere, so I should probably, probably get on that. Probably another episode around that one. Yeah, that'll point. be interesting. So we're going to shift gears to to the world of uh, to to the world of uh, I don't know lightning round questions. I don't Let's know what do we call these. These are things I like to ask guests when we have them on. I'm going to hit you with a few of these. What's the best song written in the last 100 years? Uh, you know what? Going with the theme, I'm going to say "Boy Named Sue." Boy Named Sue. Yeah, Shel Silverstein, played by Johnny Cash. It's about a, a kid who tracks down his dad because he's got a shitty name, and then they get in a bar fight. It's awesome. Yeah, it's it's a pretty wonderful song. Yep. Right? Bill or George or yeah. anything but Sue. Uh, what's the first word that you think of when you hear the sound of your own voice? A uh, uh, goose. Goose. Um, the first time I ever had myself recorded that I can recall, I had to do, I had to do a fucking debate in seventh grade. And I don't know why they were like, oh yeah, these these uh, these these budding adolescents. Let's uh, let's throw some gas on the fire here and videotape them so they feel even more insecure about themselves and their changing bodies and their weird, awful sounding voices. Uh, and I had to do. I got. I I drew the short straw. So I had to do a, a speech about why I thought that dress codes were a good idea. And I don't think they're a good idea. <laughs> but I got stuck doing that shit. And so I'm up there and I'm like. Like, they made us dress up for this stupid fucking debate thing, and I'm, like, wearing, like, a button-up shirt, like, tucked in, and I'm still wearing one of those, like, uh, like ball chain necklaces. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking about how, like, yeah, uh, so uh, dress codes are a good idea because they make the poor kids don't feel bad, and you can't have gangs, and, and everyone's like, you're wearing one of those ball chain necklaces that we're not actually supposed to wear at school because you can choke on them. And I was like, uh, and then we, anyway, we ended the video and I was just like, we had to watch all our own videos and I just watched and I was like, I sound like a goose. I just had this like weird, like, Oh, oh, oh," (laughs) fucking honking, stupid voice. And like, I don't know. That really stuck with me for some reason. So that's it. You're goose. I can't remember what the fuck I was doing like three months ago, but like when I was in seventh grade, I remember that perfectly well. That awful. Can you make it, can you make a goose sound? Uh, like a hiss, like I don't know what it. Huh. Uh, that's pretty good. So that's what's here. All right, so you're the goose. Yeah, a goose, great. What's your favorite flavor ice cream? Uh, I'm a sucker for peppermint stick, and I think it's a, a fucking crime that that went from being like an evergreen, year round, no pun intended, ever all year round ice cream to just a Christmas time one. Yeah, like arbitrarily, they were like, "Oh, peppermint stick, no one eats that outside of the holidays." Okay. Ice cream, the Christmas treat. I, I like how your advertiser voice is like a like a 19th century uh, announcer on the back of a liquor wagon. Uh, it's it's pretty Zeppelins, great. Zeppelins, made from the heaviest of metals and the lightest of gases, get into Zeppelin today and float about above the skies and nothing could go possibly go. Oh, dear God, it's on fire. Beautiful. Um, if, you could, if you could travel through time and uh, meet anybody, who would you visit? Um, God, I mean, I feel like that's such a that's such a great hypothetical in the kind of the, the grand the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But as we've learned from the various Terminator films, when you go back in time, you sound like a crazy person no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. So like I feel like I'd be like, Frank Zappa, I need to talk to you. <laughs> and they'd be like, no, you can't just go meet Frank Zappa. Like, I mean, I feel like if you ask that same question to somebody like 30 years from now and they're like, I would like to meet Katy Perry. And they go back in time. And they're like, Katy Perry, I need to talk to you. I'm from the future. They're like, get the fuck away from Miss Perry, sir. Okay. So if you go try to approach Frank Zappa, you don't think you get close because they're going to think you're crazy. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, so, if we're going to be like totally realistic, like uh, probably my late uncle who died when I was 11, who was a painter. I would love to just go back and bullshit with him. And I feel like he's probably like, I can just roll up and be like, hey, uh, I'm your son from the future. Or not son. I'm your nephew from the future. Uh, and he'd be like, all right, that's fine. You sound fucking crazy but you know like you know he doesn't have bodyguards you know he doesn't have there's no reason that people would be like stalking him from the future so why not yeah i like that all right so what would you guys talk about probably art uh or cats or something i don't know one of those two yeah what is the most terrifying creature in the natural world oh shit um goliath bird eating spider oh expound fuck Fuck the goliath bird eating spider that is a bird eating spider that is a spider that is I think it's the size, about the size of a dinner plate. Its legs go out like 11 inches. It's just a giant-ass tarantula. 
uh, I don't know why I did this. I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. This is like the equivalent of like, like I would trade this bad decision for just the worst hangover. Uh, I was on Reddit and there was some post that was like, today I learned about the Goliath bird eating spider and all of the things it can do with its fucked up jaws and its fangs and it's an awful thing. And I decided to click on the comments and read all these various anecdotes about Goliath bird eating spiders. And there's one, there's kind of this like Schrodinger's cat of whichever one of these is true is is worse than the other one. But somebody was like, I, I heard a story. Uh, one of my professors was hiking through the tropical rainforest and one of these fucking monsters came out in the middle of the path and he decided just in sheer panic to stomp on it. But it was so thick that it was still alive and he said it was like stepping on a puppy. So he stomps on this giant ass spider and he just didn't, it was like, it was like stepping on a bouncing Betty. Like you're just like, well, uh, it's not dead. It's just really fucking pissed off. And they don't like, they're not, I don't think they're deadly to humans. They're just fucking huge and terrifying. And have giant teeth. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're going to bite you and it's going to hurt very, very badly. And they're like, yeah, they're like, it's one of those things where like people always tell facts about them where they're like, yeah, it's, it's fangs can puncture the skull of a mouse. And I'm like, I mean, that's like, that's like less, that's like a walnut, you know, like a mouse skulls aren't really that dense. Like I could probably kill a mouse with my bare hands though. I don't know why I would. Because I'm not in the Green Mile or something. But anyway, so the other side of it was someone's like, hey, I call bullshit on your story. Uh, Goliath bird eating spiders are actually so fragile that if they fall even from like a very short distance, they'll rupture and their guts will spill everywhere. And I'm like, so either it's just the most fucking disgusting, easily squishable thing ever, or it's the most unkillable, godless abomination on the planet Earth. And either way, it's terrifying. Yeah. It's either, like, it's either it's, a spider that blows up like a gut bomb. Yeah. Or that professor is still standing in the middle of the forest right now. Yeah. Afraid that spider's going to move if he steps away. Yeah, fuck these guys. Okay, that's... I'm not a Spider-Man. That's horrific. There's also that weird... Um, that sneaky snake that's like a it's like a nasty eel that has like scissor blade teeth that like hangs out under the sand and... Oh, I don't think I know about this Um, one. I forget what it's called. It's like a... I think it's a... Some kind... Of, it's like an ocean bug. Ocean it, bug? It looks like that fucking thing from Sphere. Was it like a squid in that? Or was <laughs> it, think, it's like a... It's like let's a, it's like let's a stick with Goliath bird eating spider because okay. we know the name. I, 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 we, we, we have uh, you back on while I'll put it this, this way. One. This thing can cut a barracuda in half with its... With its it's got like. Six- I did. I didn't need to know that. Yeah. I didn't need to. There know you go. That. Uh, what's your favorite word? Uh, there's a lot of them. Yeah. What's 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 one? Give me give me a favorite word. Uh, I I like uh garish. Garish. Garish Ooh. is a good one. Wow, that is a wonderful word. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I like that, that one. It's a tricky one. Uh, who was your first kiss? Uh, my first kiss was a, a girl I'm still friends with today. Her name is Alicia. Yeah. Um, we went and saw the Truman Show together, and we shared a Sprite. My mom was there, and then when she was dropping Alicia off at her house, um, I walked her to her door, and we stepped behind this big-ass 70s van that was parked in her driveway. I guess her dad had a van or something, and I we gave her a little, a little kiss. A little kiss for yeah. the evening. Um, yeah. And then the first like time it was like with, with like tongue. That was pretty cool. I was actually at summer camp, and this girl was like, Hey, you're cool. And I was like, what? No, I'm not. And she's like, let's go for a walk. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like hanging out with these, these friends. And we get like, we get like around the corner sort of from this like picnic table area or whatever. And she goes, she just like sticks her tongue in my mouth. And I'm just like, whoa, I got to know what to do. And I was like, apparently she told her friend like, yeah, he's a really bad kisser. And I was like, I didn't know we were supposed to be kissing. I had never been, I had not been trained properly for that. And then she was like, I don't know if I'm going to hang out with Max anymore. And then she went and hooked up with some other kid named Max. And I was just like, are you just going through the fucking phone book here? Like, this is know. this is a dark story. This is a tale of woe. Right She's here. really cute, though. She's super cute. Her name is Annie. Yeah. Her name was Annie. I, I hit her How up old on, were you? Uh, 13, I think. 13 or 14. Yeah. I hit her up on Facebook after the fact. And I was kind of hoping she'd be like, oh, you're cute now. This is cool. But she was like, oh, hey, how's life? And I was like. Eh. She's always remembering you as that bad kisser. Probably, yeah. It was. I should have just been like, listen, Annie, I'm a better kisser now. I've done lots of kissing since then. We should have a rematch. <laughs> cake or pie? Uh I really like carrot cake. Ooh. I really like carrot cake, and that's like a that's like an unpopular opinion sometimes. I think that cake is fuck, that's a tough question. See, that's not a fair question because pie is like you can make meat pies, you can make shepherd's pie. Yep. Pizza is a pie, according to some people. Yep. Uh, and then you get tarts, which are like a sort of a pie. They're like, I used to piss off my mom all the time. She's like a, a French chef and I'd, I'd come in and 
she'd be making like this dainty little tart and I'd come in and be like, what, you making a pie? And she'd be like, uh, actually, a pie is uh, very different from a tart. Tarts have thinner crust. And I'd be like, that's a cool looking pie, Ma. And she'd be like, it's not, it's really, it's it's a tart. They're different. And I just, it was it was fun. That's lovely. Every time she made it, she never made pies because I'd always come in and be like, what are you making? A fucking, <laughs> fucking tart? <laughs> Do you make pies or tarts? Uh, I make, I make pies. You make pies. Yeah. Okay, you're a pie making man. Yeah. Uh, what's a question you got for me? Uh, what kind of music do you listen to? Uh, I listen to a lot of music. What's the last? What's the, the last thing you listen to? The last song I listened to was a Super Mario Paint medley of classic video game music done in Mario Paint Composer. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I fucking awesome. I fucking love Mario it, Paint. Yeah. It was it was Mario Paint music, and it was it was a bunch of different video game music from like the 1980s through like the okay. Wii era done in Mario Paint in one long Fair medley. Enough. See, I really like the the built in like, the the preset songs that are on there. Mm-hmm. Like, there's I don't know. There's that one that's like, like, and for some reason, like, I, this was way too recent for it to be acceptable. I think this is in like two thousand five or six. I was like, I was at my friend's house. We we're just fucking around in Mario Paint. We started making up lyrics for that, and we we're like, all I remember is we called it Mister Poopty, and it was like. <laughs> 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 Mr. Poopty, Mr. Poopty, are you shit? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> and I mean, on, that's a thing that people do at three in the morning while playing Mario Paint. That, yeah. No, I, I I make up lyrics for yeah. for songs without them all the time. I think it's fun to do. Yeah, Max, thank you so much for doing this. Thank yeah. you for sharing the story about your dad. Yeah, um, thanks I, for letting me tell it. You know, it's quite a story. Uh, it's, it's amazing. One of those things. I feel like I've touched on it here and there, but never really been like, yeah, here, let's fucking let's. let's Cut my life into pieces. No, thank you for laying it out and yeah. for sharing it with with all these people watching and listening. It's it's kind of you. Um, where can people find you, Max? You can find me on IGN.com. I host Up at Noon. Uh, it is a weekly comedy variety show. I do that with Brian Altano. You may be familiar with his work. I also host Podcast Beyond, which is about PlayStation. Uh, and sometimes we'll eat an entire honey glazed ham on the air, much to the chagrin of people who have ears. Um, both of those are on IGN. And then I also do the Comedy Button Podcast, which is just thecomedybutton.com. How is a ham offensive to the ears? I don't that's, know. That's music to my ears. I don't know what you're talking about. That reminds me. Of I mean, I'm, I know, I'm sure right there now. was like, I think we got like a, a ton of like weird ASMR listeners who were like, yeah, I hope they eat something, some other kind of uh, cured meat. <laughs> I, keep, I keep, I keep having people ask me to do ASMR videos, but. I, oh, I you'd be know. great at it. You think? Yeah, know. you've got a, uh, you've got uh, dulcet tones. I, I think I got kind of a funny voice like that dinosaur in Toy Story. Yeah, that's true. So if he that's was okay, it, though. Oh, okay, I'm good with that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, Pockets Full of Soup. If you uh, want to support the program, we're at uh, pocketsfullofsoup.com, jaredpetty.com. Uh, look for Jared Petty on Patreon, etc. And if you don't want to give, that's fine, too. Just listen, spread the word, and enjoy. Thank you so much. And now we're going to go to the mail. Once more, Max, thanks a lot. Hi, all. It's time to thank our Patreon producers, Xavier saint Amand tremblay and Robert Nieder, whose generous support makes this show possible. And also to thank all of you who back us on Patreon and support us in so many ways. Subscribing on YouTube, subscribing now on iTunes. Yes, we're on iTunes. And another way you can help if you want to is to rate and review us on iTunes. Those star ratings and a short written review really help the show. So if you have a second to do that, I'd really appreciate it. And indeed, everybody who sends kind letters, kind words, tweets, everything, those members of the the Pockets Full of Soup Facebook group, which you can be a part of, and I hope you'll join. And here, we got a few letters right now that I'd like to read, just brief messages of thanks. I would like to thank my wife, Shandolin, for putting up with me during my army days, college, and now my real adult job. That's from Trenton. And here, from Martin, I would like to thank my wife, Sonia, for sticking with me in really hard times, fighting against and learning to live life with mental problems. She always stuck with me and was there for me in my time of need. From intern Josh, an old friend, former intern Josh here, I just want to say that I'm thankful for an awesome guy named Eric Hart, who gave me the opportunity of a lifetime and changed what I believe I could accomplish with my life. That's from an old friend, intern Josh, an uh, old member of the IGN community. Josh, I hope you're having a great day. And from Sam, somehow my girlfriend Riley has shown me more about living and enjoying life in a year than anyone else I've met before. Thank you for being your wondrous self. And finally, from someone identified by their email only as Turtle Naked, I am so grateful to have my grandpa, a.k.a. Papa. He has been a wonderful help, 
mentor, and friend. Those are just some of the thanks we received this week for people out there. If you want to send thanks to someone, try to keep it at around 140 characters or less. Send it to mail at pocketsfullofsoup.com. Also, any correspondence you'd like to send, once again, mail at pocketsfullofsoup.com. Any inquiries, any questions. Uh, I try to get back to everybody, but we do get a lot of letters, so I'm doing my best here, guys. Uh, I'll try to keep up. If you want something read on the air, do let me know in the note. Uh, and uh, if you haven't been read yet, don't worry, you're not uh, you're not forgotten. Uh, we're just getting a lot of these and uh, a lot of episodes to go here. So thank you so much. You're an incredible community of people. Once again, I invite you to join the Facebook group where you can meet some really nice members of the community. Um, wonderful conversations that start there. Thank you so much for supporting us on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. Next week, something a little different. That's right. Every fifth episode, we're going to go a, a, a little uh, a, in a little different direction. And this will be the first time we do that. So every five episodes, something different. So next week, look forward to something different, volume one. Uh, and until then, I hope you have a good day, a good week, and a good life. Bye-bye.